Today we're going to be doing the installation of App Inventor on your home computer. We're using the Chrome browser to actually do this, and so we load the app website for appinventor.mit.edu as the home page. We then go ahead and click on the Explore tab. Once we're at the Explore tab, we choose the option for Setup. It's in the purple tab at the top. And we've already installed Java on this machine, so we're going to just choose the second option to install the App Inventor software. Now this is a Windows machine, so we'll choose the Windows option. Obviously if you're running something like Linux or OS X, you'd want to choose those options for that machine. First thing we need to do, of course, is download the installer. It only takes a few minutes to download. Once that's downloaded, we're then able to go ahead and run the installation software and continue from there. We go to our Downloads folder, and we can see that we have the App Inventor Setup Installer right there, and we double-click on it. We want to give it permission to install the software to our machine. and we go through the regular installation setup wizard. We agree to the policy. Now, the default install location works just fine on a home computer. However, as we saw in class, the network machines might try to install it to a location that is not visible, and so please make sure you choose a location where you can see that folder and have access to the file itself, just to make sure you're able to install the file properly. This says it's going to create a start menu folder. We don't need to worry about that because we will not be using it whatsoever once we install the software. As you can see, the installation itself goes very quickly. We finish the installation. And now we can go ahead and go to the App Inventor website, click on the orange Invent tab. We may be prompted to log into our Google account if we've not already logged into the software. As you can see, I've already logged in and it automatically pulls up the last project that I was working on. Once we've got App Inventor loaded, we can also now open up our Blocks Editor where all the programming happens and where we have access to the emulator that we can then use in class. To do so, we open the Blocks Editor button, clicking right there. Once it's done, it'll bring up this option that we want to keep this file. Please say keep and not discard. After it downloads in just a second, we click on it to open it up, and it should automatically prop up using the Java Web Start for your system. Java 7 in this case is loading. And in just a minute, we will have the App Inventor code block screen. Here we have our App Inventor blocks editor. And once we've got this editor up here, we can go ahead and start a new emulator by clicking on the new emulator button. That's what the App Inventor installation software takes care of for us. It does take a couple minutes for it to load. Once it's loaded, we then choose the connected device, that emulator, 